In this video, we're going to talk about EGR systems and some of the testing that we can do, some of the components that are involved, and we're going to use this uh, Ford Ranger to do so. So let's get started. So let's get started with first some component identification. So this is my 2001 uh, Ford Ranger that we've got here at Parkland College. It has the three liter V6 engine in it. And so we'll start with some of the things that we can see pretty easily and kind of work around do my best to capture where all those things are at. So start up here, uh, this sensor that's mounted pretty up top and prominent is the differential pressure sensor assembly. Uh, so this is one way that we watch for uh, self audit as to whether or not the EGR system was functioning and carrying out what we asked it to do. And so if we look toward where that's at and follow those hoses, it's gonna take us around to this side. And that leads me right here. So this diaphragm and valve assembly right here is my EGR valve. This one is vac vacuum actuated. And if I look as best I can down underneath here, this tube that's coming out of the valve going down, that connects to my exhaust manifold, serves as my source. You can see it back there to the right, my source of the exhaust gases and then this valve may, mounts right on top with a passageway. And so on this system, that's just the, the basic outlay. Um, the component that we don't see really prominently up top is the vacuum solenoid that's gonna control vacuum to the top of this valve. So let's start with talking about the valve that's on this truck, um, how it's supposed to function and how we can test it. So just like we talked about in the lecture, uh, several different types of valves exist. Uh, this one in particular is a mechanical valve that uses a vacuum diaphragm in order to actuate its movement to change the flow that exists between these two ports. So anytime I put a vacuum manifold vacuum source on this diaphragm, that valve is gonna travel upward that's gonna open this passageway and allow flow. And so on this particular truck, we use a similar valve that's right here. The vacuum source plugs to the top and then that travels back and goes to a control solenoid that the PCM actuates. And so what we're looking for, when any time we test one of these, we want to audit both the control system, so that being the vacuum function or maybe it's electronic, the electronic function, as well as the mechanical function, which is the valve itself. Can the valve open and close? That's part one. Part two is can that valve flow the amount of gas that we need to make a change? One of the really common issues we've got with EGR system is that the soot and carbon um, that is in the exhaust stream will make its way through this system and effectively clog the passageways over time, especially um, troublesome with aluminum components like this intake manifold. So we're going to go ahead and start the truck. We'll let the idle stabilize. And then we can work through how to test this valve. So most of my Mechanical style valves like this, I can utilize a vacuum pump in order to change the valve manually. And that'll give me an opportunity to audit whether or not it works. So I'm going to put my vacuum pump on the valve. You can see there, anytime I place a vacuum on the engine, idle quality changes and goes down. When I release that vacuum, everything is restored. All right, so we're inside the Ranger and we did our mechanical testing the engine bay. That told us that the valve could flow. That's one way that we could test things. If we've got a vacuum-based 
valve, we can easily apply vacuum to it, see what happens. Um, if that's not an option, or if it's an electronic-based system like this one is that uses the solenoids of control flow, then we've probably got some better options and opportunities to use a scan tool to go through that same process without having to touch any components, touch any vacuum lines. And so we'll take a look at this sequence on the Ford. So I've got my scan tool plugged in. Today we're gonna to work with the Snap-on Solus Edge. I'm gonna to go to Scanner. And anytime I can go to specific vehicle software, uh, that is gonna help me have more options in terms of tests. So I've got the key on, I'm gonna go down. This is actually a 1999. We're on a Ranger. We've got the three liter. It is the non-flex fuel model. I've got an automatic transmission. I've got air conditioning. All right. So now I'm met with just my general menu of things. And so typically under functional tests is where I would find information for an emission control system like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the truck. And go to EGR vacuum regulator. This is going to allow me to change the duty cycle of the control solenoid. So up top I've got a, a plus sign and a minus sign. You can see there idle has gone down. You can see my camera shaking, right? If we take that away, we should get the idle to smooth back out. So what that's doing is changing the duty cycle. It's listed right here. We'll take it back to zero. The duty cycle of the solenoid that sends vacuum to the EGR valve. So as I ramp that duty cycle up, I'm applying more vacuum to that valve, which means that it's traveling, it's opening, I'm getting more flow, and then that causes the idle quality to suffer as I put that exhaust gas back through the intake manifold. And so there's a lot of things that typically come out of a test like this if we follow the Ford procedure. They generally will give me some insight as to what I wanna see on some of these other PIDs during the test. So some of the PIDs are, are pretty clear uh, PIDs that we use for other diagnostics. One that's fairly unique to this Ford style system is this DPFE voltage. And so that's the differential pressure sensor that we talked about that's out kind of toward the front of the intake manifold. That sensor is looking at a difference between two different points within the EGR system. And there's an orifice between them. And so anytime there is flow that exists, that sensor sees the differential, it sees a delta, and that's what creates its voltage. And so as I run this up, I'm gonna go all the way up to maybe 70%, see if the idle holds. So here we are at 80%, and you can see that the DPFE voltage really spiked uh, when we got to a high flow value like that. So that's showing me that there is flow that exists and on a system where I've got that type of sensor, it's a great insight into whether or not when the valve opens, that flow actually exists. The other test that we're met with on this board is the EGR vacuum regulator or EVR test where I can just turn this on or off. And so I do that by going up here and selecting the vacuum regulator, I hit on, and the idle really comes down and I can see that DPFE sensor voltage go way up. So those two things together tell me that the valve's functioning and that the passageways can function because I see a decrease in the idle quality and I see the DPFE sensor register flow. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back off. I should see the DPFE drop and my idle quality is really restored.
So say I've got a vehicle like this and I've got an EGR insufficient flow code. What do I look for? Well, there's a handful of things that are commonplace. There's a handful of things that are commonplace uh, that can go wrong with this. Uh, so much like we talked about in our lecture, one of the biggest issues that we've got is the carbon buildup within the valve and the passageways. And so anytime that happens, they're just mechanically, it cannot flow. And if I go through my tests, I do not see any change as I actuate the EGR valve. Pretty high probability that that is my problem. So at that point, I remove the valve. I'm going to inspect all those ports. And depending on how those ports are uh, set up, I've got a couple different options to clean those out. Uh, we'll, we'll spotlight a Honda TSB and some of the troubles they've had with their six cylinders to kind of highlight that idea. The other thing that I see a lot with these Fords is that this DPFE sensor will go bad. Um, it is a transducer based sensor and moisture, heat cycles, all these things tend to be quite hard on them. And so it's common to have an insufficient flow code, not necessarily because the flow is not happening, but because that sensor can no longer see uh, the flow occurring based on its analysis. The other component that I always want to keep in mind with on this is that I do have a network of vacuum hoses to help make that valve go and ultimately the, the EVR solenoid. And so those are other things that I'm going to check and make sure that they're in good condition as well.